Are you prepared for continued supply shortages? Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Kylene. And I'm Jonathan. And if you're looking at what we're looking at, the supply shortages aren't going to resolve themselves anytime soon. What we're seeing is that maybe things are actually getting a little bit worse right now and we don't know for sure when they're going to get better. We were talking with my nephew the other day. He works at a grocery store and he said they're only getting about 45% of the orders that they put in. So they're being instructed to fluff the shelves, make it look full, but they're really not getting as much as they'd like. Now, and one of the things he did point out was that if you go to the store for a can of tomatoes, there'll be a can of tomatoes there still. You may not be able to choose the brand or like the variety, what kind of tomatoes, but there's still a can of tomatoes. But um, it was really interesting to listen to him from the other side telling us about how there really are shortages going on that sometimes we don't know about. And so one of the things that Jonathan and I decided to do, well, I guess this was more my party than his, but well, um, yeah. he just went along with it. I'm so, here for the ride. <laughs> So there are certain things that we can produce on our property, right? And so we're really confident that we can continually get those things. But then there are other things um, like many of the basic sanitation kind of items that we can't, we can't produce on our own property. And so we decided we've got five people living at home right now. And we decided that we would do a Walmart pickup order and see if we could get sanitation or the basic supplies. Some of them aren't sanitation, but the basic supplies that we think we need from doing a Walmart pickup. Um, and this was really kind of interesting. So it was for six months, that's what our plan was. And so in this video, um, and this is the supply, and there are definitely things that they were out of, and we'll talk about that. Um, and there are other things that quite frankly, just didn't make sense for us to buy at Walmart. We usually buy them someplace else. And so we didn't get those. But um, this video might be a little bit interesting for you. So think about those things that you cannot produce on your own. And now might be a good time to stock up on some of those. One of the things that we did buy was just some paper towels, right? Or inexpensive paper towels. But to be quite honest, we don't usually use these much in our life. This package would probably last us for at least a year. Yeah, I don't keep them on my too. kitchen counter. I keep them tucked in my pantry because what we do is we just buy these towels and then you can get them like in packages at Sam's Club or at Costco. Um, and we use these as normal people would use paper towels because it's more sustainable. Yes, you need to factor in that you're going to need to wash them and have the ability to do that and sanitize them. Um, but we can use these over and over again. So that's one of the things that helps us be more self-reliant in a category that you might just be throwing away. You might think that you need a ton of chemicals to be able to keep your house nice and clean and sanitized, but quite frankly, you don't. Um, we are very basic for a couple of reasons. One, because this is a lot less expensive and two, because I don't like a lot of chemicals um, around my house. So we always keep lots of vinegar um, and Dawn dish soap and then baking soda. Now in this bottle, what you see, this is mixed half and half. It's got half Dawn and half vinegar. And what I do is I'll take this and we use this to clean the showers and we'll just spray it in there. And then this is nothing more than baking soda. And we've got, this is just an old ragu jar and we poked holes in the top. And after you spray the shower, you just spray or sprinkle baking soda on it and it activates it and makes it, you know, fizz. And then you can just get in there with a little scrub brush and it will clean your shower better than anything you can imagine. And yet it's just a basic chemical, or not a chemical, but it's just basic. It's just soap and it's um, vinegar. So half and half. Now you can also, one of the ways that we clean our windows is just to put vinegar in a jar or in a sprayer like this with a couple of drops of Dawn. And it actually does a really good job of cleaning the windows. When I go to mop my floor, I have a steam mopper and we put distilled water in the steamer and a couple of tablespoons of vinegar. And so I'm not using any chemicals on my floor. So if you're looking at the basics, very inexpensive, how to be able to keep your house clean, um, just these few ingredients will go a really long way. 
Now let's talk a little bit about disinfection. Um, disinfection is something that's very important and you may remember when the pandemic started, trying to find anything to disinfect became very difficult. So having some of these on hand is important. Um, things like these wipes, maybe not absolutely critical. Okay, they yeah, sure, they're, they're not critical, right? But they're, they're so sure nice. They're sure nice and handy. Like, it's, it's more expensive, Yeah. but I like them so he, he lets me. And so another thing on our list was, it. yes I do, uh, was just basic Clorox. Now this is sodium hypochlorite. It's good stuff for disinfection. We actually prefer to use calcium hypochlorite because it's a lot cheaper. It has a lot longer shelf life. And this is something we would encourage you to do because this makes it possible for you to disinfect a huge amount of surface area. You can disinfect water and all of it's very inexpensive. Um, so, so there's a there's a link, right? Um, we'll leave a link to a vid whole video we did on calcium hypochlorite and how to use it. Right. But one of the things that was really important is this has a six month shelf life. So right. that's when the chlorine will start to weaken. And that's why you need it because it's the chlorine in it that's a disinfectant. Right. Um, this has about a 10 year shelf life until you mix it up and we mix it up and we put it in here and then it has the six month shelf life. So it starts out about 10 and then, so can you see what a nice long shelf life you could have? It's getting hard to find this though. Like I've been trying to put some links on and you, it's harder to find it. So yeah, so um, get some of these things yeah. while you can. And of course we can't forget toilet paper. How can we ever forget toilet paper <laughs> after what happened when the pandemic started? It was so hard to find it. It was kind of hilarious actually. It was uh, hilarious for us because we had toilet paper. If I didn't have toilet paper, it wouldn't have been so funny. <laughs> but we did know some people who didn't have and it was a scramble. A um, little bit of handing off going to, to help people in need. So um, this is such an important item in your storage and it's so easy to get at times. You need to stock up while you can. So we, in our order that we did, um, we were actually limited on what we could buy at Walmart. And so we weren't able to get our full six month supply. Um, we usually buy the toilet paper at Costco. And the reason why is because it's just so easy to grab that, in, you know, in this nice big size and, and go. Um, but so for a year supply of toilet paper for one person, it's supposed to be 50 double rolls. Now, quite frankly, I use a lot more toilet paper than Jonathan does. Yeah. So, so you've got to figure out personally um, what your usage is and, and go from there because it's, yeah. that's one of the things. And really the size to of the rolls it's is all lie. over the place. It used to be somewhat <laughs> standard and now it's double rolls and triple rolls and, and big rolls and, and big rolls, rolls and, and, and all kinds of things. So yeah. it, it's too hard to keep up with that game. Yeah. So really you're going to need to measure that. But one of the other things, we talked a little bit with the paper towels about being sustainable, right? And you know, we can only stock so much toilet paper. It's true. There's just, there's not room. And so one of the things that we have is reusable toilet paper. Like that's such a disgusting word. And we have a video on that. So we'll leave a link to that video. But um, one of the things that we do is we take, these are terry towels, right? They're pieces of towels that have been all worn out and we've cut them down to size um, so that the, one of these would be a decent size to use um, for toilet paper. The terry is nice, flannel is nice. We also have a bunch of flannel squares. Um, okay, so with the paper towels, I use those every day, right? I, I can't bring myself in my regular life to use re reusable toilet paper unless it's a disaster. Um, one of the other things, like this one shows you the flannel squares. These are bigger and what I do is when somebody grows out of their flannel pajamas and they're too worn out to pass down, then I just cut out eight inch by eight inch flannel pieces and then I store them like this so that when we need to do you reuse a bowl toilet paper, we can. Um, this front one here, this is actually some thermal underwear. And I thought, you know what? Okay, that would probably work too. So it doesn't have to cost you much money to be able to build your supply. Yes, this is nice. And yeah. This takes more work and you have to know that you're gonna have to be able to clean these too, right? Um, but it can be done. As you may recall, when the pandemic began, 
we could not get hand sanitizer or liquid soap. They were just gone. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. So I would really recommend that we are stocking up on some of this. Now, um, this is just a refill, but if you watch, it's crazy. I have a friend who um, was out shopping and she found these clearance. These are little hand sanitizer bottles that we were paying $2.50 to $4 a piece for, um, for a quarter a piece. And so she asked us if she wanted us to, or if she, if she could pick some up for us. And we're like, of course. So now we spent $6 and we have enough hand sanitizer to last us pretty much forever. Um, but one of the things about it, I'm not a big fan of hand sanitizer. I'm a huge fan of washing your hands, right? I think washing your hands is really important. Absolutely. Um, and given the choice, if you're washing your hands, I think it's better to do it with liquid hand soap because as you're, you're rubbing your hands on the bar soap, um, you're leaving some contaminants on there and that's not a good thing. So, so there is a place for both. Um, we use these all the time in, in the shower, right? And bar soap, one of the really cool things about it is like it will pretty much store forever. And one of the biggest things when you, when people have nothing, having some soap to be able to um, clean their bodies is so important. So if you don't have much money and you can't go stock up on all this, think about just stocking up on just some hand soap so that, or I guess this isn't really hand soap, bar soap, that's what I should be calling it, bar soap, because this is just incredibly valuable and it's probably one of the number one things that I would get. And let's not forget about our teeth. I want to have healthy teeth. And having the things to do that is important. It is because teeth affect your overall health. Um, and quite frankly, I have never tried it, but I'm pretty sure I can't grow toothpaste. So this is something that is really important for us to have in our storage. Now you could, if you, oh, it's leaking. You could use baking soda if you really um, wanted to, but I've, I've tried it. I'm not a fan. I'd much rather have toothpaste. Um, we have an entire video actually on um, the importance of having baking soda in your storage and all the yeah. different things. It's really, really important to have, but, and you can brush your teeth with it, but I kind of choose not to. Um, dental floss is really important to keep your teeth good. Um, so, and you think about the people in your family because everybody's different. We have some of our children that have a permanent retainer in there. And so they need special floss. So it all depends on on what you have. And Jonathan's pretty excited actually, because when we did this order, we haven't been able to get, what is it, Cineverse? That's his favorite dental floss. <gasps> He's yes. thrilled. Um, but he finally got the flavor that he likes. I know that's a little thing, but um, every time we've gone to get it, they just haven't had it for quite a while. So um, we also got toothbrushes. So there's an extra toothbrush for everybody. We use electric toothbrushes, but we wanna make sure that we always have a backup. And finally, there are some other miscellaneous things that we want to stock up on and have on hand. Uh, laundry soap is really important. As you probably saw, we did a video on using the power station to run the laundry. That's yes, one of yes. her critical things she wants it to is. do. So having the laundry soap to do that is important. Shampoo, I like my hair clean. When it gets oily, it's pretty gross. So um, having But now this shampoo, won't work for me. Like I have, right. she I has have my shampoo stuff. and he has his cheap, cheap shampoo stuff. and it's okay because yeah. I need my own shampoo. Now when we did this pickup order, um, okay, deodorant is not necessary. However, it makes us like to be around each other a whole lot more. And so when I did this pickup order, I actually ordered six sticks of deodorant. Now it's funny because when you talk about how long a stick of deodorant should last, um, how long does yours last, John? Mine's right now at a year and a half and still going strong. My kids, on the other hand, theirs lasts about a month. So I don't know what's going on there, but... <laughs> He's kind of exaggerating a little bit on the kid's side, not on his. Nope, not on nope. his. He's very... Yeah, that's Jonathan, but that's okay. But, and he doesn't stink, so you guys, it's okay. Um, but like our girls, they go through at least one of these within three months. So they need to have two in a three month period. But so Walmart still had deodorant available, but not the kinds that we normally would buy. And so that's another really good reason, kind of like the dental floss thing. It's a good reason to stock up 
well, you can have your preferences. You're not going to die without deodorant. Um, your family might, but you'll probably be okay. And then there's things like chapstick and lotion um, that really make life a whole lot nicer. And those are real personal preference items. Um, the feminine products fall into the same category as the paper towels and the toilet paper. So there are other ways to get around using the disposable versions, but we have three women in our household who need these. And so we definitely stock up because I would much rather have the disposable stuff than reusable stuff to take care of those needs. So my personal opinion, but that matters for what I store. Yes, it does. <laughs> I just say, yes, ma'am. One of the things that I forgot to mention about the laundry soap is that we didn't buy any laundry soap on our Walmart run because we normally purchase this at Costco. We wait until it's the, I don't know, $3 or $4 off. And then we get the store brand just because we're cheap, right? Um, but it does a great job. It, it does. It gets the clothes clean. But for us, that's the way that we buy this. So we didn't buy any of this at Walmart. Full disclosure. So let's wrap this up. We hope this has been somewhat motivational. There are supply shortages and they may be going to get worse. So just a little bit of advanced planning can make a huge difference. Yeah, so that it doesn't impact your family as much, right? And I think that's what, what we want, you know, so that we can have the things that we need, like this cinnamon dental floss to take care of our needs. Now, it takes room to store this stuff, right? And um, we have a fairly small house with a lot of people. And so one of the things that Jonathan did in our master bathroom, we have a little toilet closet area. And right above the door, he put a one by 12 shelf. And that's where we keep toilet paper and feminine products because it's lightweight. So if it falls down in an earthquake, it's not gonna really hurt anybody. Um, and it is conveniently located, but just on that shelf, it's, I wanna say it's a year supply for four people yeah. plus the feminine products. So that's, that's a really cool way to just for the cost of a piece of wood, being able to extend your, your storage space and find a place to store this stuff. Exactly right just takes a little bit of creativity. And we have a video that talks about some of these creative ideas, but use your own creativity and create space and let's get this done. And now for the question of the day, what supply shortages are you seeing? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.